Uh, good evening, everyone. We're gonna talk about the dementia mini series again. Uh, we have Bobby here. We're gonna talk about this kind of sad topic for the end of stage. So um, this is uh, dementia itself, fourth stage. I think um, we're gonna go to that. So Bobby, can you hear me? Very, you're very low. It's very, very low. Very low. Uh, that is the, how about now? No, but I'll, I'll just go ahead. Okay. So I can just barely hear you. Hmm. Uh, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Technically, there are what the clinicians call seven stages to dementia. The first four are when you first notice it and first observe that there's a change in the person. Five through five and six are the ones that really are drastic changes. And by the time you get to seven, that's when you know that it's really starting to go into full-blown Alzheimer's. But one through four, basically the person's mood swings change. Um, everyone tends to be forgetful, but uh, the, the forgetfulness becomes really pronounced. Uh, they don't remember uh, how to get back home if they've walked away or they get lost driving things of that nature. Those are the first four stages. Uh, very uh, upset with you if you try to correct them. Uh, one of the things I noticed with my mom, she didn't want you to take her car keys. Uh, they, they think they can still drive and they can go places and do things. In the, the next set, they really get very combative. They, they argumentative. They are sure that they're still right that you're just taking advantage of them, that you're not tell them, telling them the right things. They really want to argue with you. Um, they, they just really are, they're not the person that you know. You know they're not the same sweet person that you grew up with. When you finally get in, getting to stage three, what I call stage three, because I, I usually say four stages. Mm -hmm. Stage three is when um, they do things just sometimes you think just to be ornery, but they hide things, they throw things, they want to fight, they want to bite, they want to really be argumentative even to the point of being aggressive. Um, they still can do some things for themselves. Uh, they can still put on their clothes, but you have to, you know, be, pull out the clothes for them and help them. Uh, they may be able to still even take the baths for, the, with them, for themselves. But by the time you get to the last stage, stage four, they have really become so submissive because they really have the mindset, uh, really don't have a mindset. They really can't understand. You try to tell them things to do. They don't understand it. And at that point, that's when you really start to think about, what you really need to do for them, not for yourself, but for them. And the best thing you can do for them is generally to put them in some type of facility where they can get 24 hour round the clock care. You can't do it. It's just no way one person can do that when they get to that stage where they really need constant attention, where they need someone to basically do everything for them, feed, wash them, dress them, feed them, uh, move them around because even at that point, sometimes they lose the ability to walk. They lose the ability to use their limbs. So you can't really stress yourself out trying to worry about how am I going to get this person from one point to the other or whatever. You'll end up hurting yourself. So the best thing to do is consider putting them in a facility. And I know that sounds harsh. A lot of people get very upset at that point. Uh, it's harder on the caregiver because they're, they're feeling like that they have not succeeded. They haven't done the best that they could, but you are only human and you can only do so much. When you're starting to look for facilities, go when they're not expecting you to show up. Do not set an appointment because then they're going to put their best foot forward. Just show up at a facility. Go at times like uh, at lunchtime to see how they feed the people. Go late in the evening to see if the people are just sitting around doing nothing. Um, find times that you would think they should be active doing something, whether it's just chair aerobics or something. Find the time to inspect these places when they would least expect you to show up. First thing in the morning. Will it like turn you morning, away? 
normally I don't take my client to the daycare until nine o'clock. I took my client there at seven o'clock this morning when they open and they were shocked to see me. So never keep, well, you keep them guessing so that they, you don't know it. Try to find three or four facilities that you feel comfortable with. Don't settle for one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it might be nice to go to the one that's closest to the house. So you can go visit every day, but the one closest to the house may not be the one that's great for your relative and for your loved one, because they may not have the facilities that are necessary. Look for ones that actually say memory care. If it's a memory care facility, then they're going to work with people who have dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. But if they just say assisted living, they may not have the ability to work with someone who has dementia or um, Alzheimer's. So make sure you have looked for the right facility mm-hmm. before you decide to place someone. It's nice to want to have them, you know, oh, they're only a mile down the street. I can go, I can walk down there for my exercise and see her and come back. No, that's not going to work if that's not a good fit. Mm-hmm. So you may have to find one that's on the other side of town and you have, may have to be a half hour drive, but you look for things that will be pleasing to them if you remember if they if you realize that they remember more when they're around familiar circumstances so if this place has a garden and your relative used to love to work in the garden that might be the best fit for them because they'll get out there and be able to have the dirt in their hands and they'll remember oh I used to do that and that would be great for them so find a facility that's going to uh, I know another one that has a kennel where the person, if they have a pet, can bring their pet. So this way they can go play with their pet and they can still feel like a part of home is there. So look for things that are going to help your loved one feel comfortable in the new surroundings or in the location where they're going to be. Because now they're going to be in a new surrounding, mm-hmm. a place they're not familiar with. So try to make sure that the place where you place them is going to help make them feel comfortable, homey, love, love, just like you love them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, you mentioned about should they, should they bring, start to investigate during the stages three then when they want to look for a facility? Generally, generally past stage three, because like I said, my client right now is at stage three, right. very combative, very argumentative, but still can do a few things for herself. But what is the um, time frame for stage three normally? Well, now say again one more time. I mean, what what is the uh, period of time like between stages three is from a month from now, two months from now, or six months that from was now? One of, the things, one of the things that the clinics all say, there is no time limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some people where it's very aggressive. Mm-hmm. So they may go from stage three to full-blown Alzheimer's overnight. Wow. There, Yes, it can happen overnight. So... In the case of my mom, even though hers was a brain tumor, mm-hmm. she went from being very active to being completely not knowing who we were mm-hmm. in a period of one week. Wow. So it can happen very quickly. Mm-hmm. So there's no time limit. And that's why they say even with these stages, there's no time. If you decide to Google mm-hmm. the seven stages of dementia, Mm-hmm. It will give you a better definition of what each one, what to look for in each one, nice. but you can Google it. Mm-hmm. And, but when you get to the last stage, uh, it's very obvious then because you really can't help them. Nice. Uh, they, like I said, a lot of times they lose mobility skills. Uh, so, and you, if you are trying to lift them, you're going to end up hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to put them in a facility who, where they have the people who are skilled and can do that. Right. Nice. Uh, they have lifts and they have things that can help them move them mm-hmm. from place right. to place mm-hmm. where you wouldn't have that at home. Mm-hmm. And all you're doing is making things more difficult for yourself mm-hmm. and even for them, because you're probably making them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So the best thing to do is when it gets to the point where you just can't handle it anymore, mm-hmm. don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. Mm-hmm. Understand you're doing this for them. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to make sure that they are comfortable and that you're doing it because you love them. Mm. I see. So, um, so I miss, I see a lot of stage four is more like, uh, it's, it's like statistically only 22% will get to stage four with the, with the dementia development. 
So I would just try to find out is um, what we suggestion. So you think just bring them to the uh, facility that we the, the, the last stage and do you prepare for them to, is that what we call is like a, a prepare the funeral before they really pass. So it's just a formation. So okay. what are we suggesting yeah. about that? Every place is different. Um, countries are different, states yeah. are different. Mm -hmm. In North Carolina, if the person has assets in their name, mm -hmm. such as a house or a bank account, mm -hmm. that money will end up rolling over to the facility oh. if you haven't already done something to make sure that you can, and I hate to use the word hide, Bye. but if you don't hide that money ahead of time, uh, they can file suits against you for mm -hmm. uh, trying to hide it. The best thing to do, I know we did with in the case of my grandmother and my aunt, we knew it was on coming because it runs and it ran in the family. Mm -hmm. So in the case of my aunt, we sold all her property, we sold the house and everything was put in my mother's name because mm -hmm. my mother was her executor and was taking care of her. But that was done 10 years before she ever had to be admitted. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with my grandmother, her condo, everything was done and put in my dad's name before it got to the point where she had to be put in a facility. Mm -hmm. So this way, the money's there, we can pay, direct pay, and all, mm -hmm. but they can't take, the only thing they could take was the social security. Okay. Um, but if there are any other assets, mm -hmm. cars, CDs, um, you know, other money, man, uh, money accounts, uh, house, anything where there's money involved, it needs to be taken care of and moved out of that person's name. Really, it should have been done at the onset of the Alzheimer's because what they're going to say is the person was not in their sound mind right. when they signed this over mm -hmm. and the state or the, the municipality will say, no, that money has to go to the facility. Right. And then so you need to do your you need to do your homework ahead of time. Right. So they should do it. Uh, the stage five, stage one, right? When they at stage one, really at stage one, mm -hmm. when they're forgetting how to find their way back home and mm -hmm. and can't drive, and that's when all that should be taken out of their name mm -hmm. and put in. I call it the trust. But right, put trust. it in the name of someone else mm -hmm. that is going to be able to handle the finances for them down the road. Mm -hmm. Because if you wait too long, mm -hmm. and I, I, every state, because I know in North Carolina, mm -hmm. it used to be five years. Someone says now it's seven years. Mm -hmm. So if it if you're trying to move it now and it, it, it just, you know, like they're, you're, you're trying to put them in the facility today mm -hmm. and you haven't moved it, they're going to take all the assets. They're going to take everything. Hmm. I see. So every place you need to check into it and find out. And the, the best thing you can do, there's a comp, uh, organization called Elder Care. Mm -hmm. look look at elder care elder care will tell you all the specifics about your location and elder care will tell you how the steps of what you need to do because mm -hmm. that's what they specialize in elder care hmm. i see so um so beside the first stage we had to look about the legal issue then the last stage so um so i would just mention about um i think cultural differences i mentioned about the what is do you, do you think what kind of stage should be they should the family be prepared for you know mourning their loved one really gone but but not physically gone what would you thinking about that okay if the person is not physically down mm -hmm. if they physically can still walk mm -hmm. and maneuver keep them as long as you can mm -hmm. uh, don't try to put them in a the facility because again they strive better at home mm -hmm. in a familiar surrounding but if they are at a point where you can't right. where they can't do for themselves mm -hmm. where they can't um i mean it's just hard for you because you got to feed them and everything right. and you can't do 24 7 you just mm -hmm. can't then start looking for a facility but if you could if they can still do something for themselves if they can still feed themselves if they can still walk to the bathroom or uh, things like that keep them at home as long as you can so you mentioned about the last stage for them is just kind of, you know, just like a home home setting, you know, the facility setting. And then for them to stay there and then you just visit them once in a while, right? 
Thank what you. you need to do is put them in the facility, but still try to go. If you can go every day, that would be great mm -hmm. because they like seeing that familiar face. Mm -hmm. But if not, if there are other family members, alternate. So maybe you can go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and someone else can go Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and then maybe everybody can go on Sunday, you mm -hmm. know, but try to visit them because especially when they first go into the facility, mm -hmm. they're going to be very confused. Right. They're going to be very confused because they're not in familiar surroundings. They're going to be so confused that they may even walk out of facilities. I'm sure you've heard where people have walked out of facilities and gotten lost and, right. and this kind of stuff. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to get acclimated to their new surroundings. Mm -hmm. So you need to go hold their hand, let them know, mom, dad, hey, we're here. We're going to come visit you, but this is where you need to be. This is where we want you to be so that you can be cared for because we love you. Make sure you let them understand that you love them. Mm -hmm. You're doing this because you love them not because you don't want them anymore. You're doing it because you just really can't handle the situation anymore. You know, and you will know mm -hmm. as a caregiver, you will know when you can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. You will know, your body will tell you because your body's gonna start breaking down because mm -hmm. you can't continue to, you're, you're losing sleep, you're losing weight, mm -hmm. you can't handle the situation. They're too heavy for you to pick up or move. Mm -hmm. Once it gets to the point where you can't handle it, then that you will know it's time to put them in a facility. But um, isn't that the doctor tell you they are in a stage of four or what? No, doctor will not tell you. Mm. The doctors will tell you to use common sense. <laughs> use <laughs> your <laughs> own common sense. That's the first thing. The doctors are not there with them. So mm. the doctors can't see what's going on. Right. They can only go by what you're telling them. Right. So if you're telling them, my, my dad's doing this and he's doing that and doing that. They're saying, okay, but how's it affecting you? Mm -hmm. And when the doctor says, how's it affecting you? And you start telling them, well, I'm having these crying spells because I, I feel guilty. And I, the doctor is going to basically tell you, you may need to look for some psychological help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may need to go get some, some something for yourself. Mm -hmm. But the doctor is going to tell you, you have to make the final decision. The doctor will not do it for you. Hmm. No, the doctor, the doctor is more of there for the medical part, right. but not for the mental and physical part, because they don't see the patient day after day and they don't know what's happening. So the doctor is not going to say to you, oh, it's time for you to put them in a the facility. They're not going to do that. First of all, they don't want that responsibility because right. if something goes wrong, you can come back and sue them. They're not going to do that. I see. So no, the doctor, the doctor will not say, oh, it's time for you to put your loved one in the facility. Mm -mm. Mm. They're going to put it back on you and say, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it. So you're going to be the final decision maker. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And you're uh, welcome. yeah, I'm thankful for the sharing the stage and the stage. So we'll see you next time. All right. Take care. Okay. Take bye -bye. care. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Take care. Okay, you too.